Hello, welcome to episode number 621, Making Songbringer. Today, I'm working on the new boss. This is Ren, the brother of Keel, the, uh, which is one of the other bosses. So he's kind of similar in ways, but he's supposed to be really, really unique. So that's the goal. Make him, make him kind of his own unique thing. So he's got this charged attack. Um, and he can t do this teleport or blink move. So far, this is working out pretty good. I've only got a couple of the animations done. Um, some of the animations are left to do. Like, I'm just using the animations from Keel for now. The blue guy is Keel. The new green guy is Ren. So Ren needs more animations, and I need to keep playing with his, um, with the AI here until this is this fight is really really fun. So that's the goal. Just make it fun, um, and if possible, get all the art done today. Um, it'd be nice. I was thinking just a minute ago, it would be nice to have the hurt animation done. So I think I'll start with this is Idle South where he's standing straight up. We'll start here. Actually, I could just save this as. Um, I got this crazy new setup where <clears throat> I'm using, um, this is actually kind of cool. I have this whole keyboard all customed out. Got this all set up. So um, I've got a trackpad on one side and wireless keyboard on the other. Some custom like extra space so that I can put it on wider things or narrower things. Anyways. I'm trying out this new system where I'm using, I'm actually using the caps lock key as my left mouse click. So I never ever have to click so I can use the trackpad a lot easier. So I'm still getting used to it. Um, right. So one, he's going to need to be like hunched over or what's um, keels hurt like.
What's up, Jack? Howdy. Oh, damn it. I'm not logged into the chat. What's up? Yeah. You're good? Good to hear. I'm good as well. Just doing some pixel art today. What about yourself? Some code? Sweet, man. What language? <laughs> the best and only. Yeah. Right on, man. Until Jai comes out, right? That's how I see it. I'm like, well, C++. Even though I'm pissed off every time I have to compile, like, my my headers again. I'm like, damn it. There goes there goes a good 30 seconds. For me, yeah, maybe so. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. Come on. I would really want that. I want to be able to start making my next game in Jai, but it's probably not going to happen. So I'll have to rewrite some parts in C or something. Okay, so this one we can save as hurt. You like the idea of Jai? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, that's a that's one part that uh it's pretty important, right? It has to be like supported and adopted by the community, you know what I mean? Right, standard library, yeah. Yeah, people using it too. It's pretty dang important. Cool, man. Oh, at least an hour. Yeah. I'll be on here for at least an hour, if not two. Get this hurt sword animation. Yeah, I'll be on here. I'm just making this new boss, working on the pixel art. And the AI. Okay, so we got those two animations set up. Now to get this one, so he looks like he's being hurt.
What's up, Soothsayer? Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Just working on some pixel art here for this new boss. This guy's kind of crazy looking. He's got three eyes. Or does everybody? Hmm? Is it just that everybody has three eyes? What's up, Biter Kid? High five, man. High five. How's life? How's everything going, man? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Just, you know, progressing, growing. Working on my video game some more. Doing what I love. What's up, ugly Swedish fish? Welcome to the stream. Tommy Killer, what's up, man? Yeah, streaming. It's about time, huh? Thank you, man. I appreciate you saying that. I'm working on a weird little setup here. I'll show this off in a minute. This is kind of, this really messed up his face, but <laughs> if we add one pixel there, it'll help. Uh, that's better, sort of. Okay, it doesn't matter if he's that messed up because he, um, let's make him squat down just a little bit, though. Doesn't matter if it's that messed up, because this is just the hurt animation. And this thing blips by in, like, 0.1 seconds, so it's not that important that it looks great. Maybe a new dungeon. I'm really on the fence about that. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough time to do a whole new dungeon, but it might be like a mini dungeon where you can kind of explore like four or five areas before you find a boss in it. Something like that. Um, it's definitely at least going to be this one area and, and it's got an entrance. So there's, two, there's at least going to be like, well, three, four, there's at least going to be four screens for it. Jeez, I keep pressing... I keep lining up on the wrong keys here. All right, let's get that compiled. Oh, nothing to compile. I thought there was art I just exported. I haven't even hit him yet. Okay. Yeah, more content coming. It's fun to add, and it's stuff I've been intending to create the whole time. It's just I didn't really have time to create it um, while, you know, before the release. But it's, you know, it's kind of, it's that kind of game where you can add stuff. It's already procedural. It might as well have stuff added to it. How about if I try and run straight at him? I should be able to hit him then. No. Nope. 
up. He's not playing it. Hmm. What's up? Hey, how you doing, man? Um, do I get more money per buy from GOG or Steam? Uh, it's the same. Okay, why isn't he doing this hurt south animation? Wait, did this get exported right? I did not see if it recompiled. Oh no, it didn't. Oh, because it only has one frame. That's right. All these need two frames, even if they're exactly the same thing, to export right. You got unsheathed. That's the unsheathed. Here's hurt. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Yeah, either one's exactly the same. Whatever's your preference, Steam or GOG. Um, yeah. Um, oh, you know, one thing that might actually be better for you as a player is to get the Steam version because the Steam version has access to betas. So if you want to, if that's if you want to play beta version though. So if you're down to play the beta version, you can play it with the charged attack and all the new stuff coming. Right on! You've you've called upon your brothers. Nice. We got some frames now. Cool. That exported finally. Okay, now he should have his hurt animation hooked up. Do you demand a cookie? Done. Virtual cookie. Here, I'll get a cookie on the screen right now. This is your cookie. What kind of cookie do you want, man? We got all sorts of cookies in here. Like, damn, this one looks really good right here. Oh, yeah. How, Dommy, how's your project going, man? Right, same here. I haven't played any either. But you're like, a cookie's a cookie. They're all good. All these cookies are equal in your eyes. Uh, beta cycles are... It depends. It really depends on how much content's being added. But they're anywhere from a week to four weeks. So, um, yeah, this latest one has been a long one. It's been like four weeks before I got this last update done. And then this next one will be a few more weeks too. So yeah, more like, yeah, I guess more like bi-monthly to, to monthly is really kind of how I'm doing it because of how much content there is to be added in this big update coming out soon. So if you generally prefer GOG, stick to GOG. If you don't, if you don't need betas. Okay, so this compile. Let's see if this works. I just want to run up and hit him, and he should play his hurt animation. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that's cool. Nice, nice, nice. It works for all his animations. Okay, so I will need to do his running animation soon. And I want to do a, a better teleport animation too. I'm not sure what to do for this teleport right here where he just he just blinks across the screen. He does this little sword attack while he does it. He's supposed to charge up more actually. Why isn't he charging up so much? Nice, you've been wrapping up. You got a meeting with your tutors? You get oh, you shooting for a decent build? How's the build going, man? How's the how's the game? Where is it at?
Um, Jack, Tommy Killer's working on a project with a team uh, for his university, right? Is that, am I correct about all that? In your team size is like you got about like four people in your team or five, right? But yeah, they're making a project. They're making a game together for their class. It's like so cool. Like, how dope is that? Like you get credit for for making a game. That's pretty cool. I think that's how it works, right? You guys are getting credit for this, right? This is part of your class, right? Okay, so these herd animations turned out good, actually. I like these. And they don't need to be any longer or any more complex. So I'm going to go ahead and close them. And commit them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's like... That's the first thing you should learn as a game developer. And it's often the first thing you do learn when you try and take tackle a project with a little bit of ambition, you know what I mean? I've I've been I've always had so much ambition in projects that I always create or I always make things way more the scale just gets way crazy off the how much time it would take to make a game that you know that involved. Enterprise scheme. Oh, that's right. It's enterprise scheme. Yeah. Yeah, it was painful. Oh, I know, right? Painful to like cut back parts. You're like, oh, we don't have time for that. You gave up on your game? You're starting a smaller one? All right. So wait, you why'd you give up on Dragon Word, man? I like what I saw. I know, it is so difficult to limit yourself when you're doing something you love. I guess it was kind of nice with Songbringer, I didn't limit myself. And I did go way longer than the Kickstarter was supposed to. Like the Kickstarter was supposed to fund me for like six months. The project ended up taking like two and a half years longer than that. So, you know, I made people wait a long time, but I, I just indulged every little whim that I could. There's still things I want to do. Oh, oh, Dragon Word's done. Oh, nice, man. Oh yeah, you know what? Didn't you send me the um? You sent me the the Windows version though, right? I have Windows. I could just reboot. You should send me send me another link on Twitter or whatever, and um. And I'll play the Windows version. Right, you're gonna cut one part for now. Mm hmm. Cool. I like that. I think it's I think it's pretty important to focus on the features. Like you're talking about making making one part more feature rich. I think that's a good strategy. Cuz when you focus on when you cut out the things that aren't as important and focus on those one features, it can help. There was a video about that by shoot who who did it. It was on oh, I don't even remember the game. But it is like an actual really good design strategy to focus on what is the core element of your game, you know, or the core the core parts and make those better rather than trying to get much more stuff quantity overall, you know. Oh cool, it's on itch, right on. Sweet. All right, so what animation next? Um, I could do his running animations.
Yeah, I use Vim for my text editing. So, um, yeah, I love it. I love my Vim so much. I got it all customed out just the way I like it. I've remapped so much stuff and it's got everything I need for all my all my development, you know, jumping to functions and all that. That's like the worst function to try and jump to. Set. Cool, man. I will. Yeah, you've been trying it? Cool, man. I did it real slow. Like, I did, um, and it worked for me that way. Like, it took me a long time to get into Vim because at first it was like the H, J, K, and L keys, you know, moving around with those as arrow keys. Like, it was really hard for me at first, but then I changed all my bindings for Songbringer to be the H, J, K, and L. So when I move the character around on the screen, I'm using Vim keys. And also my, you know, the sword, top hat, and other kind of, that kind of weapons and stuff. Those are also Vim keys. The other hand's Vim keys. So my hands really never leave the, screen, the same position as much as possible. And that's really helped my... Um, I had tendonitis in one wrist. One time I had the other kind of tendonitis, whatever the opposite is, carpal tunnel or whatever. You know what I mean? <clears throat> What's the bar? Yeah, this is really, really great. Yeah, I forced myself to learn it, and I started with those arrow keys. And then when I finally started figuring out the VimRC stuff, that's when it all, this is when it all clicked for me. When I started like really remapping Vim to be exactly how I wanted it to be. Like one of the first things I did is this, is I remapped, um, normally you press semicolon to enter command mode and I, um, or no, normally you press shift semicolon to do the, to do the actual colon. And I just wanted it to be the regular semicolon. So you don't have to press shift to enter command mode. Like little things like that are, I've just made it even more convenient for my own style. And then, like, uh, what what's that? Oh, it's called Vim Airline. That's that. This is that thing at the bottom here. It's called Vim Airline. Yeah, there's a lot of ideas in this in this Vim RC, and I think I even have this on my GitHub. If you want to take a look at, yeah, I I've, I've got this online. It might be an older version. Let me just um. I'll just I'll actually update that right now. Let me get on my gist.github. As long as I'm logged in already. I can't log in while I'm streaming. Oh, I'm, I'm not logged in. Whatever, I'm logging in anyways. Cool, man. See you, Nog Noggy. Yeah, let me update this. So you can check it out. Is there, there's nothing like, whoops. God, oh, I keep doing that. <laughs> I've got my hands on the wrong position here, pressing the wrong keys. I think this is all good stuff. I can, like, this is good enough to share. Yeah, okay. Oh, I could just, um, I've been meaning to do this. There, my VimRC is updated. Okay, so how do you find this? Just go to GitHub, get, gist.github. I can't type in this window right now either because I'm not logged in here. <laughs> it's been a minute. So anyways, just go to gist.github.com slash natweiss and you'll find a link to my VimRC. Yeah, yeah.
I kind of made my own color scheme too. I should probably post that, but like, you know what I mean? The other stuff is just remapping keys. Um, these are pretty, pretty awesome. These are git commands. GS is my, oh, date geez. Some of this is like really, GS is my git status. So that's just git status. GD is git diff. GC is git commit. All right, man. See you later, kid. Okay, enough of this stuff. Got to get on to um, a new animation. Idols. Well, I got the idol sword south, but not north. Die, parry, running is probably what's, what I should do next. No, I do not have a Discord server. Should I? You think I should? Why? What what is it? What do you do on a Discord server? You just chat, right? Isn't it just chatting? <clears throat> I guess I need this idle animation open. So get this, duplicate it. So this is um, Ren's color scheme here, and then I can go on and change his height a little bit. And oh, let's get these all. Um, like this. Cool, so I'm just applying these merges. So, so he gets his right color, mashed down into the pixels. Don't have to go and mess with that when I'm changing this art.
Whoops. Missed one. I'm going to check out what his animation, how this is hooked up for his run and running animation. Okay, so he does have run two. That's if he's in his second stance. Let's comment those out by just indenting them temporarily. And I'll change this one, get it prepped for running sword east. And I think we can actually check this out now. I mean, I need to do his, his helmet, his cloak, change his height. But this would be kind of cool just to see it real quick with this. So we can run a little bit with at least the right color. I think the best one to do next would be actually the sword. That one is a lot more prominent. So I'm gonna close this. I think it's actually a good idea to just get all these kind of hooked up. All these animations ready and prepped. That way he'll just all be, be totally green and 
I can just quickly go to each one of them and add whatever is needed for that. the hat and all that and I could go and change his entire property list so it's loading all the right files from the get-go I don't think I'm not gonna do the, the sword number one at first though I got running, north, south, sword, did I do zero north? Oops. It's supposed to be Ren. Okay, I gotta correct that mistake.
Huh? Don't. Don't. <laughs> I did that the other day on somebody's Twitter account on, on accident, and they called me out. They're like, "You just, you just unfollowed me, then followed me." I'm like, "Damn, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to." <laughs> I do that all the time too, man. I'm like, what is this? Why today's icons, man? There's like so many little symbol icons you have to know living in today's reality. Jeez, man. Nobody writes words underneath things anymore. It's all, we, we live in a mobile interface. Yeah, mobile interfaces. Thank you for the follow. All right, so that should be all the animations like prepped, except for the double the double running and melee animations. So all these can now be changed. Change all these to all right and we need to comment out really twos just indent those okay so now it's going to recompile, add all, all those new textures and stuff. And if the game successfully runs, then it, that means it can load all those animations. If I miss anything, then it'll, it'll assert. Nice. Okay, cool. So now I won't look as broken when he's running around. It'll, it'll be green colored at least. Okay, cool. So I can start working on whatever animation I want now. Now that these are all hooked up. Thanks, man. What did I do? Oh. Dang, I keep doing that. Oh, that's basically what I want to do anyway. Okay, so I'm going to check all this stuff in. I added all these animations, but they're not all done. The hurts are... Running, sword, hurt, idle, parry. Yeah, all those can be added. And then there's this ren and unsheath to be added. And this is just updating his art. References.
All right, now I can choose whichever one I want. Should I do these other sword animations though? Maybe I should. This is the one where he does this animation. This is also what? Okay, it's barely different. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about adding those animations just yet. Cause he's a different character, he's gonna he's acts differently and stuff. So that's the first animation though, the zero Ren Zero. Where Ren Sword Zero East. Alright, cool. So time to add an an Add a hat, give him a hat and, and a cloak. This is the one I already made him taller. And he holds his sword totally differently, so I need the idle east again. Idle sword east. Oh, he doesn't even have one. Let's make one. That would really help.
Mount, what's up, man? How you doing today? Yeah, same here, man. Doing good. What's new? So we're going to be careful merging these. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Selling steady. Um, I've come to the conclusion that basically the indie market right now is really difficult to succeed in. It's because there's so many indie games. Actually, just gaming in general is a very tough thing to succeed in right now because there are so many games last year if you look at the graph of how many how many games were released on steam um just like three or four years ago it was under a thousand a year and just last year there was over well yeah last year 2016 there were over four thousand games released on steam so i'm waiting to hear how many actually got released in 2017 but i'm guessing it's more right if do, what do we release on steam this year 6000 games 8000 games it's been you know it's been crazy so it's so um there's so many games that it makes it difficult to succeed as a game as an indie game developer if you're just starting out right now because it doesn't really matter how great your game is there's a lot of other games out there that are also great you know, there's people have an overabundance of games now in their libraries that they don't even play. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of them. I have so many games that I haven't even played yet. It's because we oh, it's because they look good. I can't wait to play that game, you know, but like I have so many already. It has. Yeah, it has. But it's also kind of gone the way of like indie music. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of. There's a lot more hobbyists as well. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people that are just kind of like, they just want to make a game. They don't really care if they make money doing it. You know, it's just more about, you know, I, I, I guess that's, you know, a lot of people do that. I did that in music for many years. I never really cared about making mu money making music, but I just wanted to make it. So I think there's a lot more of that these days too. So, but I think the industry has been through times like this and other situations, sort of. So, whatever, we'll get through it, you know what I mean? But all I'm saying is, it's kind of like, unless you're already established as a game developer, like, it's difficult to get established, you know, and make a good living at it these days. I'm making barely, you know, I'm, I'm making barely enough to succeed and make it to the next game with this game. You know, and if if I had released this game four years ago, who knows? It might have done ten times as many sales. You know, that's what it seems like. Seems like games are at that level now. If I merge these, I guess that'll make it. Yeah, I could just merge all this.
Yeah, that too. Yeah, I mean, once you find a great game, you love to play. Games can be like that. Games can be so great that you really don't want to play anything else. Yeah. And that's cool. I mean, that's your jam. That's like, that's like a person's, you know, it's, that's their kind of game. You know, I, I do that. I love, you know, retro indie RPGs, action RPGs. I like some adventure games and stuff like that, but I typically don't play sports games. I don't really play 3d games that much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I probably would play 3D games if I had a nice system, but I don't really I don't really have a console. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, busy with life stuff. I hear that. Okay, so in this, um, this animation has a good um, side pose for him here, but he needs he needs to have his arm a little bit. He's, he carries his sword much differently. I know there's so many options. Yeah. Hey Flower, what's up Flower? How you doing, man? Um yeah, will the new items count towards completion? Um It's a really good question. The, uh, the there's there's two important ones that are coming. There's the charged attack which you get when you get the sword, which is already required for Yeah, all right. I, no worries, man. No worries. Um, so the sword is already com required for a hundred percent. And if you get that, you get the charge attack. Um, but then there's going to be a charge attack level two, and then there's going to be like a parry ability. And those are also pretty important abilities, but uh, I'm out, I'm on the fence. I don't, uh, I'm not exactly sure whether they will count towards a hundred percent at this point. Um, what do you think? Do you have any thoughts on that? Should these new important abilities count towards that? There's also going to be some new item combos. And there will also be another... Oh yeah, that item will not count for 100%. But there will be an item that helps you find 100%. Or helps you get 100% of everything. So it'll be like an item that's some kind of like... Kind of like this, the drones, the scanner drones or whatever. Where it goes out and it finds secrets for you. Locates them on your map. So that'll be a pretty awesome item to find. But it won't count towards 100% in itself. Nice, man. Your second place on the 100% runs? Props. Mega props, man. That's a that's a great accomplishment. I'm glad I'm so proud of you for getting um doing 100%. What world C did you do to get 100% on? Uh 
Oh, there's a good point. There's a good point, right? If you, right, if I do make the new abilities count towards 100%, then old saves will drop a percent. That's a good point. Very, very good point. Maybe they shouldn't. Maybe the charge attack just shouldn't even count. It'll be a cool item to get. And in fact, if you have the sword, you're going to want the charge attack. It is so badass. Oh, Lyart. What's up, Lyart? How you doing, man? I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, but that's how I've been pronouncing that in my head when I've been chatting with you on Steam. Oh, Lyart. Oh, you're not Lyart. Sorry, wait. You saw him on discussion forums a lot. It was helped you. <laughs> you you were wasting one time and fell asleep with the game on? <laughs> you fell asleep with the game on and when you woke up you had 100% is that how it worked you just don't even remember getting it oh or you just don't remember your world scene it was oofy yeah you're not liar what's what, what do you want to say your flower man your flower 20 oh sweet man okay cool no worries. Did I, did I, did you get helped? Did you like, you emailed me, but I, I probably emailed you back, right? Did you have a bug or something? Anyways, I did not mean to ignore you if I did. And if I did help you, then great. I'm glad I helped you. And if you haven't been helped yet, I will love to help you and figure out whatever the bug is and fix it. 19 hours. Oh, because you fell asleep, so your game time went on? That's crazy. Huh. So anyways, 19 hours, that's still pretty good to get to get the game 100% in. Um, I am planning on doing a 100% video at some point. I'm just trying to finish this update first. So uh, you bring up a really good point, though, about the 100%. If the, if the new items are counting towards 100%, then old saves will drop. So I think it's a, such a good point that I'm really starting to consider that maybe it shouldn't, they shouldn't count at all towards that. Okay, this real, this frame right here. Did I, me did I mess with this yet? Let's open up Keel's. Keel sword. Zero East. And see how tall he is there. Oh, that one about the credits. I did? Oh, okay. You know what? If you want to email me, you can email me at any time. And I can go change your name in the credits. That's a really easy thing to do. So feel free to change it. I don't, I didn't by, as a system, I didn't by default take people's Google names or Gmail addresses or anything like that. I never did that. So it must have been an accident. I don't, I didn't mean to take your Google name. I meant for everyone to specify whatever name they wanted in the credits. And that's what I would put in the credits. So it must have been my bad. Somehow that that happened. Or did somebody else have your Google name? That could have been it. Like, did somebody else say credit this name and that name happened to be your Google name? I don't know. Anyways, send me an email and I can figure it out or change it, whatever. Whatever you like. <clears throat> All right, so I'm checking out his legs here. These are 11 tall, 12 from the ground. Ren's taller. So Ren needs to be, yeah, this is the same. This is 12, yeah, okay, so. Now that that's cleared up, needs to be. Two pixels taller there.
Okay, now to draw his helmet at a different angle. I haven't never done this yet. So there's his cloak and his, oh yeah, his sword needs to be held the, the other way. Okay, let's start with the sword and his arm. His arm is going to be like this, sort of. And he's not going to have this arm. And his sword is going to rotate around. Oh. Yes. Yeah, it'll change on everything. Everything. PlayStation 4 will get it. Xbox will get it. When the update comes out, it'll... If I change it in the master file, it will change on all platforms. Nice, man. I really appreciate this. Nice, man. Cool. Yeah, so it'll take a minute for it to get into the, the game, you know what I mean? It'll get into the Steam version first, and then... Yeah, it'll, but it'll take a minute to get into all the platforms, but it will. It'll, if, uh, it'll eventually get into them all.
Hmm. I'm wondering if the sword should be maybe angled behind his back a little more, maybe. Oh yeah, I gotta do his eyes. Yeah, that's what makes it ran right there. That's important. His helmet kind of looks funny though, still. Ah, that's better. Yeah, it does. At least behind a footprint, that's for sure. <laughs> oh no! Yes, yes, I did. I saw that. I'm glad. I was. I felt bad being like. It was kind of cheesy. I thought the creator of the game was like number one. It's like, you know, I'm so glad somebody beat that time. Yes, yeah, yeah. The, so the OST is coming out too, um, and I'm about halfway done with it because the game is it has its procedural audio, you know. So your music depends on your world seed and your dungeon number, what key it will be in. So your each each one of the music songs sounds a little bit different depending on your world seed. Um, so the OST is different though, so that. It's going to be just one world seed and it's going to be like a hand design thing because it has to be rendered out once. You can't just play, I can't just release 12 different albums, 12 different OSTs, you know. So there's going to be, um, it's going to be special. It's going to be like, it's this cool like key change that changes just the right keys so that the whole album has this really cool feel. Um, anyways, it's coming out. It's going to be on Steam and it will be a while before it's finished. Like maybe end of year almost like i'm thinking that's about how long it'll take really because i got to get this update finished first this is more important this these really these new attack abilities are so rad i got to get this all finished so that i can get out there as fast as possible but then the ost i'm really enjoying i get to work on it maybe a couple times a week and I, the ost is really coming along well cool man yeah it's neat to have the procedural audio, but it's also really neat to do this hand-designed OST version of it. And it's kind of allowing me to kind of get in and really mix and master the songs better too. So like there's better bass, the the beats hit a little bit better, so it's a little bit more danceable, you know, stuff like that. Huh, I was thinking of changing the sword so it looked like it's going behind his back more, but actually this is kind of cool because you get the feeling that he is holding his sword backwards like that. That's the main point. He's, he's really a backwards sword holder guy. Yeah, how about a pixel art animated band playing the music? <sighs> that was that's one of the things that I wanted to put into Songbringer that never I never got to really do because it there were more important things. I wanted to have I wanted to have an ending scene where there was music being played live and there was and I wanted to have a party too. So I wanted to have this like party but I guess it'll just have to wait for a free update at some point, you know? I can just do a party or... You know, that's kind of cool. What if it did play the whole album? 
if you went to some place in the game. Yeah, Jib was okay. So this is kind of cool. But Jib, I had planned for Jib to be um, to be able to transform into a speaker. So he was his head would go, and you would have this speaker inside him, and you and it would somehow just make a lot of great noise, like. In such a small space, he's got the ability to have rad bass and, you know what I mean? He's just like a, a, a portable PA. And then Rock was going to play guitar. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe one day I'll have time to do that. I think this is a pretty good starting pose for this. Maybe... No. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm I'm happy with that, I guess. Which means I can go to this idle sword right here and turn this whole animation into something legit. got to be a similar distance though oh, it looks like that was needs to go one pixel that way yeah that's good it's okay that it's he's on the ground on that one and not this one all right so he's gonna breathe a bit
This looks funny right now. Definitely the legs are looking, making it look really weird. See that? <laughs> that was even worse. <laughs> oh man. This is It's got like the peck flex going on too. Oh man, this is funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's funny animating. It's so fun animating. Like, you know, you bring a character to life and I don't know. This is what life is for him. Nipple flexing. Okay, it looks funny here, but maybe it looks okay in the game. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> Is this one of those streams, is that what you said? Oh, one of those game-changing bugs? Uh... Get some water real quick. Hopefully this doesn't ruin any of these other animations to add this idle east. I don't think it would. Okay, cool. He starts out all right. Oh, he does go east. Damn it. He needs to face south. It only took him one and a half years. It's all right, man. It's all right. No worries. <laughs> nice icon. Emote. So he needs to face south as soon as he does his unsheath. And he's got two ways he does that. One here. Face south. Oh, face ran, then face south, actually. Yeah, that'll work. Because that'll give him a flip X, he, so he could actually be a little different looking, even though he's facing south. He's actually flipped over. Sometimes. That'll add a nice little variety. Damn it, what? Ah. Oh. Does 
it need to be Dur South, Dur None? Better late than never. Oh yeah, he's south that time. Okay, that's the trick. You gotta go dur south, dur none. Oops. I'm like the king of pressing the wrong keys today. It's so weird. What? 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 Oh well. An issue? Yeah. I need to describe an entity and its components in a text file, yeah, and then parse it in the game and set it up as described. How do I go about doing that? There's a few layers. Um, he looks like he has a third leg. <laughs> that's actually his. That's actually his sword sheath. But yeah, he's. Oh, he doesn't have it on that one. Where is it? Oh, he doesn't even have it on his, any of these animations. Nah, see, that's his, his, it's actually his sword sheath. But yeah, it does look like a third leg, I know what you mean. English, please. Okay, so setting up um, setting up a game to load its components from text, that's, that's what I did for Songbringer. I can show you how I did it here. Um, the first thing is I created my own text file format for it. Um, this is called Valtry. It's on GitHub. So if you just go to github.com slash natweiss slash Valtry, it's there. Um, but anyways, you can write your own. You know what I mean? Write your own. And basically what this does is, is um, it breaks down an entity. These are all components right here, right? So here's my render component. There's tons more options that can go into a render component. Let's do something a little, maybe a little more simple, like a health component, for example. Health component has hit points, invincible duration, number of invincible blinks, the shield cooldown, explosion size when it dies, and all these flags. And basically, what happens is the val tree is loaded with a, you know, a file I wrote. This is what I'm sharing on GitHub here. This is val tree. And this basically just reads all that text data and turns it into a Valtry C++ object, which can I can read. And then I have this profile thing. Basically, from there on, it goes and it looks for all the components that it might have in there and tries to set them up. So it goes and it, like the health component right there creates a new health component. So this is what the health component's header is like. You know, here's those int hit points. We were just looking at the, this is the double value basically of the invincible duration, invincible timer, basically all those things you had in the data there, they're, they're actually data, C++ data here in the game. And basically, here's how it loads it in healthcomponent.cpp. It can load itself from a Valtry. So it basically looks, here's the Valtry load right there. So this is what, this is what's so great about Valtry is that I can just call data on the Valtry object dot get child HP and then get that as a float value so everything can be a float value a string value or an integer value and it actually stores all three values all the time so you never have to worry what data type it is it's just it's a pretty simple format and you can also query so you could do if you added a couple levels deep you could have HP dot delay or something like that like a sub level underneath you could query data that way as well. But anyways, that's how it works. Is that what you meant? Oops. Okay. 
Yeah, it makes it really great for what's so great about loading your your components from data files is that you don't have to recompile. You know what I mean, right? It's so great to not have to even spend. You know, it takes. If I want to change this guy to have 80 hit points or whatever, all I have to do is change it. It updates the file, and I don't have to recompile any code, which saves a good 30 seconds. You know, every time at least. That's in the load, so it loads everything from a, it loads this whole um, entity. Basically, ren is this, this is ren.txt. He's got attributes starting right here. And then, so it goes and it loads all these components. Basically, this is, there's one big function, it's called create being. No, it's not create being, it's create entity, here it is. Here's the create entity function. Basically, it this is, it's loading its val tree it loads the Valtry data, you know, and then it creates an entity based on that data. So what it does here, this is this is add component. Here's the um, this is a macro here that basically just looks for it loads it looks for the data, right? It calls get child on the data. If it's not null, then it goes and calls entity add component for that component. And so basically, this little bit of snippet here tries to create a profile component if that data exists. So if the data doesn't exist, then it doesn't even create it. So um, and if an entity, like he doesn't have, for example, or he has pretty much every single kind of component. But if he didn't have a reflection component, for example, then that wouldn't get created for him because it's just not present in the data. So the data controls everything. For chicken taunt? Uh, yeah, he does kind of have that chicken taunt look going on, right? He's supposed to be this kind of, he's holding the sword like that, so maybe he should have it up higher. I don't know. Let's just start drawing this. Yeah, man. Hmm, I'm imagining how this sword will move through this animation. So he's holding it backwards. He could bring it up in front of his face, kind of. Oh yeah, he could do two moves, like one, he brings it up in front of his face, then he kind of brings it, swings it, and then swings it back down. Yeah, okay, that's what this whole animation will be. Thanks, man. It's getting better. I mean, it's not... I'm still kind of an amateur. I mean, shit. This helmet does look weird now that I look at it. Yeah, that's a little better. <laughs> no, it never quite looks right. Yeah. 
2001. I totally did get that wrong though. This is this has to look more like this. <laughs> uh. Gosh, am I, am I, do I got this right? So I'm trying to make him look like that, but from the other angle. So his arm is forward, his left shoulder is forward. I'm losing track. I gotta, I gotta stay on track. Can't get distracted. I gotta move forward and do this. So let's bring this arm. His arm's going to be more like in front of his face here. Oh, he needs to be two pixels taller as well. Yeah, yes, yeah, I do. You got it exactly right. I have a battle station I'm standing in front of. My water's on the floor. <laughs> it's because I don't really have room for it where my keyboard is, and I'm afraid that I'll, I'll just accidentally knock over anything that's right near the keyboard anyways. I've done that so many times. I'm like, God damn it. I just knocked over the water again. Spill it all over my expensive electronic equipment. So I keep it far away from my electronic equipment. All liquids. I have, a, I have an irrational fear. Yeah, big bottles. <laughs> what up? Welcome back. Get one of those beer hats, that'd be great. Yeah, I could just drink all the whole time. I know. I know. You got the same same fear? Tell me about it. Yeah, this is pretty good. His arm's gonna be like this, sort of.
Color is that? Oh, yeah, this color. Same as the leg color. The heck? I'm noticing these little things wrong with this animation. I'm like, what? That can't. That's not right. Why is there no fat people in your game? There was, there is, there's the drop boss. The drop boss has a gut. But um, I do want to create a really fat enemy at one point. Yeah. I have, actually for this very, very boss fight, there's probably going to be some modes where you get to fight a, him, a, this guy, a bunch of times. And I think in one of the modes, you'll be able to fight a fat guy, a fat enemy, lots of fat on them. You know what I mean? Job of the Hut style. All right, man, you too. Good luck with everything. See you around, man. So this is like the extreme side angle view of his helmet. Can't even see the other side really. Maybe you can see like that kind of pixel there. Hmm. Oh, a trail of damage over the time. That's a good idea. I don't think there's any enemies yet that do a trail of damage over time in Songbringer. It's good. It's good. It's good to have some, like, uh, fresh stuff. Definitely. If we're gonna have new enemies, they might as well be Feeling totally new, you know?
So I want his, I want him to like hold it a little. Yeah, at least like that. Yeah, your sword's stuck in the enemy, that's cool. Oh man, originally I had this idea where you'd be able to throw your sword sometimes. It's like, or maybe you got some kind of skill where you could throw your sword and then the sword would be on the ground, you have to go back and pick up the sword off the ground. That was kind of one of my ideas for Songbringer, but it never, that's one of those other things that never really got done because there's so many other things still to do, you know what I mean? God, if I had forever to make this game, it would be... There would be a lot more to it. But, uh, you know, some of these things will come in a future game. You know what I mean? There's going to be a Songbringer 2, Songbringer 3, maybe. If I have anything to say about it. And I can save some of these ideas for then, you know. Thongbringer, that's right. Rocket Bunny, what's up, man? How's it going? Hey, oh, right? Yeah, you, yeah, when you pick it up, well, yeah, when you, I was thinking it was just you would throw the sword and it would like bounce off of stuff too, like it would hit the wall and go boom, land on the ground, gotta go pick it up again. How you been, Rocket Bunny? I'm good too. Oh, that's what I meant. Yeah, like it would it would drop somewhere. Like you could throw it, it would hit the wall, but like fall down right there, you know. But coming back, that would be really interesting. Uh no, I didn't go to TwitchCon. Did you? I guess you could do something crazy, like if you had it up like this, you'd be like, like, I don't know. I don't know, I'm trying to imagine this animation. 
Yeah, you get to start driving, man. That's right. I remember that age. I learned to drive 15 years old in Oregon as well. This new boss is, um, this is the boss where you can power up your charged attack and you can learn the parry ability. No, I did not. I use, um, for GIF encoding, I, I do have something in Songbringer that exports a bunch of ping files, but once the ping files are, like, exported, I have this little script that uses image magic which is, um, you know, it's you can get it on, you know, like on a Mac, you can use Homebrew or whatever to install Image Magic. It's an open source utility, basically. And this is the convert command I use to do to create GIFs. So you can set your delay, like how long each GIF is. It says it's a loop forever, no dithering quality. You know, it makes it. Appropriate for pixel art. It uses a folder full of ping files to load and turns that into a GIF file So it's just a I just use a script basically that creates GIFs and then I open them up in Photoshop and make sure they're good You know like I have to Usually crop them um, And all that kind of stuff to make good GIFs At least crop them and work on the timing and all that kind of other stuff um, the other option I have is sometimes I do actually go and record a full screen 1080p video and then um, there's this cool X this is I use a software called screen flick which is great for that and screen flick can actually export a gif and they do they're actually really good looking so sometimes I just use that
Oh, for the player. Yeah, that would be cool. Huh. That's a good idea. It'd be sweet to be able to share gifts. That'd be pretty easy, actually. But I would have to create a GIF exporter. Which has to be licensed, because GIF is like some format you have to license or whatever. Right? Yeah, totally. Just record a little GIF. Good idea. Oh yeah, if you had it all the way up here, it could go wham, all the way to the side, and then all the way back. Okay, I got this, I got this. So this arm is going to be like all the way there. Okay, yeah, this can work.
So the sword came from about here. Whew, man, this animation is taking a while. Oh, it's a difficult one because of, you know, there's so much going on. Uh... 
Oh yeah, I'm already over my stream time anyway. Two hours, 20 minutes. Dang. Well, I kind of got this going. This is a good start, I think. Thanks, man. Yeah, there's something there's something a little bit wrong with it. So these two frames are kind of bugging me. But uh, this one even bugs me. Damn, this whole, almost this whole animation bugged me in some way. There's got to be, you know, this just needs more refinement, more work. So anyways, thanks for watching, though. Thanks for watching a lot. I appreciate you all. And um, I'm working as fast as I can to get this update finished so y'all can play it. So that's it for today's stream. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Later on, everybody.